Welcome back. This is part 3 of how to use Journeyman's Minimap. In this video, we'll cover some of the more advanced ways of using background textures. For example, switching to a different texture when you enter a building. Or displaying a different texture based on which floor you're on. Then I'll show you how to have more fine-grained control over which part of the world to display in a minimap. This is useful for large maps where you want to assign different textures to different areas, so using multiple map background actors, but you want the view of the minimap to be separate from that, for example because you want to show the whole level. Those are the topics we'll cover today, so with that said, let's start. So let's assign a background texture to this building, and then make the minimap switch to that when we enter the building. I'll start off by dragging a second map background actor into the level, and then resizing it so that it fits that building. You can use the, the scaling tool for that, or you can select the, the actor's area bounds component, which is a box volume, and then changing its box extents. Now something important to know is that when you use multiple map background actors, they will be rendering to the same uh, render target asset by default. Because by default, here this render target is set to the same asset, two map background actors will be rendering to this asset, but only one of the images will be saved. So that's not very helpful. That's why for the second background actor, I'm going to clear this asset over here. And if this asset is not set, it'll actually create a dynamic render target to render to. So just clear this. And also, and this is unfortunate, but also click the capture component here. And also clear its render target. Okay, with that done, what we can do now is assign a texture to this area. So I will, ascend, uh, I will assign a simple white square. I'll use the one that's in the minimap, minimap plugin. So C underscore icon placeholder. So we'll uh, assign this simple white square to this building. But when the player is in this location, for example, how do we make it only render that background? The way to do this is by setting a priority on this background volume. So map background has a, a value called background priority. And when the map view is inside multiple map, map backgrounds, and recall that the map view is a, map, is a component on the player, then it will only render the background with the highest priority. So I'm going to increase this priority to one. And now when the map view component that uh, represents or that uh, defines which area this minimap renders and that's on the player, when it enters the building, it'll switch to that texture. All right. Let's also assign a texture to, th to this building over here. So I'll just copy this one, duplicate it, place it over. And now, now when I walk into this building, it'll also switch to that texture. But it will also display the texture for this building, the indoor texture. That's because both of these map backgrounds have the same priority value. And whenever a priority value is selected to be rendered, it'll render all the map backgrounds for that priority. You can use that if you want multiple houses to display their interior layout at once when you're inside one. And if you don't want that, you can you can assign different priority values, like assign uh, value one to, to this building and value two to this building. This depends on what you want. I'll demonstrate that quickly. So let's assign value two to this building. And now these interiors are handled separately. Finally, I'll show you how to set up a custom map view. This is useful if you want to have control over which part of the world the minimap should display, 
and that part is not like that area is not defined by a map background component nor by the player pawn. So what I'll do now is let's say we have a map with two rooms both having a uh, texture assigned and I want a minimap that displays the whole world so both of those rooms. So for that I'm going to create a custom blueprint actor. I'll call it BP full map view and I'll give this a map view component. I'll set that as a root in this case, it doesn't have to be, but I'll just do that. And I'm not too worried about the size, I'll just uh, configure the size in the map. And it can also be done on a per map basis this way. So now I'll drag the BP full map, uh, full map view into the level, and use the top view to position it and scale it so that it covers both the rooms. I'm also going to assign a background texture to the second room. So I'll copy the map background actor of the first room, move it over to the second, make sure that it doesn't render to the same uh, render target asset. So I'm going to clear the second map background's uh, render target here and also on the, the capture component. And so now this map background actor will generate a snapshot and then uh, store that snapshot in a dynamic render target. And that will be displayed in, in the minimap. So if I jump in the game now and I zoom out, I see that the room next to this also has a uh, texture, like a, a snapshot generated. Now I'm going to add a second minimap to our UI. So I'll open the master widget, drag in a, a minimap, in this case I'll go for the borderless, let's say size 400, 400, anchor it to the bottom right, offset to make it prettier, and I'll call this the, um, let's say, full map widget. Now recall that this uh, widget has a um, setting called auto-locate map view. Well, in this case, I don't want it to auto-locate a map view on the player or on the background. Instead, I'm going to set it directly. So I'm going to disable this auto-locate feature. And then on event construct of this widget, which is like uh, begin play, but for, for user widgets, I'm going to find the actor that I placed in the level, the BP full map view. And then for each of those, and that actually means for that one actor that we placed, for that one BP full map view, I'm going to grab its map view component. That was the root component that we put on that blueprint. I'm going to grab a reference to that, to this widget here. Drag it in with control, uh, control drag. And then call the function set map view. And the map view I'm setting is the one on that BP full map view actor. There we go. This means that when this widget is constructed, then it will find the BP full map view actor and then adopt that actor's, full, uh, uh, that actor's map view component. And that should display the whole world containing both these rooms. And there we go. Now you can play with this a bit more like if you want you can play with this widget a bit more like if you want um, this widget not to be anchored to, to the bottom left but instead like be something to display while you're holding tab you can do something like I'll do a hacky way right now I'll just get player controller and while holding tab while the input key tab is down I will show this widget, and only then. I call this hacky because I'm doing it on tick, but in, in a game, like you would do it uh, using input events from the controller. So, while the tab key is down, we show it, and while it's not down, we hide it.
When I press tab, the full map view shows. Okay, so this uh, video showed some neat things you can do with map backgrounds by combining, uh, by combining multiple map background actors, setting different priorities, using different floors, and how to create a custom map view component to control either for your main minimap or for a second map, like what area to render. I hope that helped, and um, good luck making your game.